let us begin with the ancient Sumerian story. Enki When Nibiru was faced with the crisis of loss of atmosphere, the Anunnaki decided to mine gold on the earth to reseed their atmosphere. Enki saw it as an opportunity to grab power. He fomented a worker revolt, knowing that he could use Nibiru's emergency to force the council to accept anything. Enki wanted a world filled with slaves that he could rule over, which is something neither the council nor the Anunnaki would have ever allowed. But Enki was shrewd. He convinced the council that Nibiru would die if the gold-seeded atmospheric shield was delayed. He convinced them that the workers would not return to duty as they were following his orders since he was in charge of the mining operation. He convinced the council that the only solution was to create a non-sentient species out of the highest order ape available to do the labor, but make them incapable of reproduction so they would naturally die off. The council saw no alternative so they reluctantly and conditionally agreed and they allowed Enki to carry out the plan. But Enki pulled a fast one and gave the new species the ability to breed, wanting a permanent stock of slaves for his planned kingdom. Enki went even further. He didn't just manipulate the ape's DNA but he actually infused Anunnaki DNA into the mix. This would give him slaves that he would find attractive and acceptable to be in the company. Enki did this both in the laboratory and also allowing his loyal striking workers to inseminate the females he created. This we find in Genesis 6, which led to the Nephilim. When Lord Anu and his son, Lord Enlil, learnt of this treachery, Enlil was sent to the earth to correct his brother's sin against the universe. As the Anunnaki have very strong moral code. Enlil took over on earth and brought Enki to justice. But it was too late. Enki had created several abominable and potentially dangerous seed lines, all without an Anunnaki spirit and without an Anunnaki morals and virtues. These were savage slaves that resembled the Anunnaki but were violent beasts. The council decided that such an abomination must never be allowed to progress because they would be a cancerous infestation to the universe and a danger to any other species they encountered. But because of Anunnaki morals, the genocide of a related race was nearly unthinkable. So they decided to let a natural event destroy this abomination. They knew that Nibiru's next close pass by the earth would cause massive flooding, wiping out the abomination they decided to let it happen. Enki didn't want to lose this opportunity to have a kingdom of his own, so he went against the orders of the council and protected segments of his created beings from the flood. When the council learned of this, they were livid and Enki paid a price for his treachery. But this left a growing species that was still as dangerous as ever. Satan petitioned the council to eradicate man so the threat would be contained. But man's true saviour argued that man was part Anunnaki and therefore possessed the divine spark. And if properly educated and nurtured, 
they could one day be equals. They vehemently disagreed, asserting that a species cannot be taught to have morals, that the law of love is either written in their hearts or it is not. The council found logic in both sides of the argument and offered a compromise. Since Satan was man's chief accuser, he and his people would be allowed to utilize part of Lord's plan to educate, but at the same time, weed out those that would not be capable of evolving. The plan would give Satan a set amount of time to fulfill this directive, after which he was to hand over the earth to its rightful custodians, the Anunnaki, at which point those that were considered evolvable would be educated and nurtured under the Anunnaki for a period of 1000 years before becoming full and free members of the council themselves. All sides reluctantly agreed, but Satan did not believe that man should ever be allowed into the universe and he developed a very cruel system to cause man to live, die, live, die and be trapped in this cycle so that man would forget the lessons he had learned and he would have to start from scratch after each incarnation. Satan then created a group to dominate man, giving them the knowledge man lost between incarnations. This group was given an infusion of reptilian DNA so they would be more intelligent and less compassionate and thus be better equipped to dominate the Anunnaki seed line, which is human. When Lord and Lil learnt of this, he went before the council stating that this is no better than what Enki did. The council disagreed stating that man was most likely going to be destroyed anyway. Now let us delve deeper into this ancient account. Let us consider this from the perspective of Lord Anu. If you were a father of two boys, and one did something very bad that caused him to be cast out, creating a situation that his brother had to repair, and provoking a long and contentious rift between the two siblings, you might try create a redemptive path by which your prodigal son may return to honor, while formatting a situation that would bring the brothers back to each other's love. It seems that Lord Anu has done exactly this. It must be said that Enki simply allowed ambition to get the better of his judgment, leading him to violate an ethical restriction of the Anunnaki. If he hadn't performed that violation, None of you would be here today. So in the same way one looks at a deadly hurricane with great umbrage, one must also remember that the hurricane will bring forth water and blossom to the desert, simultaneously helping man grow in greatness, even giving man the laws that would become the foundation for all of the great societies of earth, which was no small task because the royals are not known for sharing planetary rulership with anyone outside the divine line, no matter how meritorious their service to the crown has been. Enki is divine. The Bible says that Enki will sit with the Lord upon his throne, so this indicates a somewhat subordinate position, but this can be called co-rulership. Enki will be third in royal succession. Lord Anu, Lord Enlil, Lord Enki. Bitch.
today is now at noon. There is a order, a higher order, a most high order that this government is following. Like I said, he puts in God we trust and he puts that eye over the pyramid, which the, period, the uh, unfinished pyramid represents his country or his kingdom because he never finishes. He never plans to finish his government because by finishing it, that means that it will come to an end. So what he does is he leaves the capstone off. He puts the eye of God, which is really Anu, Anu Amen. He puts Anu's eye over his unfinished kingdom or his unfinished government, which he wants to continue. That pyramid or triangle that you see is not a, actually a pyramid or a triangle or whatever. It's actually a ship, a craft, spacecraft, spaceship. That's what that is. And that represents God inside of a moving planet or ship or craft overseeing their government. They know this. They've had contact with Anu. They received their orders from Anu. That's why they put on the dollar bill. Anu it coactus. Novos ordos socorro. This new order of the ages which God favors. So they bear witness that Anu is God. Not Jesus, not Allah, not Yahweh, whatever all these fake names you give in the lower parts of the lodge that they made up. No, they acknowledge Anu. That's why it says Anu it coactus. That's God. And the Anuit, like I said, translated into the ancient Egyptian or ancient Kemetic tongue as Anubis, the god, the, the, the hound again, or the god of the dead, the overseer over the dead and the living who travels back and forth, who is a dog. Dog spelled backwards is God. There is a higher order. It tells you in the book of Revelations that God's government, God's order, God, or so good. If you're using the word God, order will come down on earth again freemasons they knew about anu the illuminati they already knew they already knew about anu the freemasons and they already knew about anu hundreds and hundreds of years ago way before people were privy to the knowledge of anu right and the sumerians how do you know that look on your dollar bill right i knew it co-optus i knew it co-optus right novus ordo soclorum this new order, God favors this new order, this new order of the ages. I'm, believe, I'm, I know I'm translating it right, but what the important part of it is to understand that these people, these so-called elite, they recognize and knew it or and knew as God, right? That in, right, or that in key or that Lord of the earth, right? They recognized in. Or Anu as God. Same way we did. And they took Anu, or should I say, we took Anu and we traveled, and Anu traveled into, uh, he traveled into uh, Egypt, so called Egypt, and became Anubis, or Anubis. And the uh, jackal or the dog that it represented became God, because the dog spelled backwards as God, or they referred to as the messenger between heaven and hell, meaning earth. And the universe, one who comes and brings messages to men, right? Or who sends messages, a real person, an advanced person. See, it's hard to get people to understand Amen because you've been fed an uh, unhealthy dose of Jesus, who is, of course, a fictitious god from the mythological gods of Zeus and Jupiter. You've been fed Allah, who was a, a pagan god, who was attached to the goddess a lot, Anubis, the jackal, right? The hound, the dog, the god. They give you things backwards, right? And they take it literally another way. Amun, as was always depicted by our, were always depicted as men. Amun um, was always depicted as a man, not as a spook or a mystery or anything else. Always depicted as a man, as a, right? In key, uh, Anu, right? Always depicted as men, right? So our God or our supreme being came as a man, 
right, came with a race of beings, a race of gods on earth. That's why statues were put up to them.